Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here today. Um, we originally had my colleague Brandon Wolf scheduled to be our moderator. Uh, he is out sick in Florida. Um, Brandon runs the um, the kind of technology vetting for our startups as they come into our R and D program. Um, so when he told me he couldn't make it, I did what any good colleague would do, and I stole all his moderation notes. Um, what we're going to do here today. Um, is just give you a, a glimpse of some of the, the projects that we're working on, the projects we've funded, and the, and the, and the people working on those projects. Um, and after that, we'll just talk about maybe more, some more macro, macro themes, particularly around the R&D project, uh, state of Massachusetts, um, uh, the economic development of it, just the general ecosystem as a whole and how they, how they all tie together. Um, but first, we're going to take four or five minutes each for our founders to introduce themselves and uh, their technology and their technologies. So go ahead, Tom. Thank you, John. Uh, my name is Tom Grant. I'm a founder of uh, GrantFin. Uh, GrantFin is focused on uh, investing in liquidity pools, uh, operating metrics around liquidity pool investing, uh, and creating indices around investing in liquidity pools. Robert Huber, uh, co-founder of Veridad. Um, my career has been at the interface of life sciences and computing. I'm academic in neuroscience, pharmacology, bioinformatics. Uh, most of my work has been on understanding the biological basis of drug addiction and neurological disorders. I uh, got into health sciences and got into the drug development process very early on and I've been amazed at the type of changes that we had witnessed since then and I uh, look forward to sharing some of our thoughts about what Web3 and what blockchain technology can do to really make the whole process a lot more effective and efficient. Uh, hi, I'm Sajin Nair. I'm the co-founder and CEO of uh, Bcube Analytics. We are an enterprise uh, software and we enable uh, enterprises to collaborate with each other using a single login. They can work with multiple parties and simplify the workflow so you don't need data managers and gatekeepers. Uh, we have automated quite a few assurance processes like audits, policy management, reviewing documents within an organization or with multiple parties. And with the Cubic Labs uh, grant, we are adding a new uh, KYC solution that will use the blockchain technology to simplify the effort that every customer puts to validate a particular uh, client of theirs using the KYC process. Okay. Now, guys, that was supposed to take 10 minutes. You ran through it in two. So you're going to put me in big pressure here, okay? <laughs> so we might have to add a little bit. Um, so in the last, in the last um, session, we briefly touched on um, the regulatory environment. Has that impacted on any one of you? Uh, the, I'll, I'll dive on that one first. Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I think the last uh, 14 months has been a fascinating time to be in DeFi in the U.S. Um, our first sort of uh, red flag was BlockFi being fined by the SEC. Uh, you know, this is a company that was uh, doing uh, on-chain lending. Uh, they, uh, they had a top-tier law firm, uh, and they found themselves being fined $100 million, which to me said the lack of, of regulatory clarity is an issue. Um, and then you, you know, 2022 was, uh, which is a series of issues around Celsius, obviously FTX, uh, and then Q1 of this year we had Choke 2.0, which I think a few people have referenced in, in earlier talks, where it became more and more difficult to have a bank account open if you were involved in crypto in the U.S. So you know, I think all of us, we we do our best to make sure that we don't uh, get directly into a regulatory situation, but. You know, the challenge that many of us have is that we see a classic market failure where uh, customers, investors, uh, users need a certain service and they can't get it because of the, either the lack of regulatory clarity or uh, simply things aren't working as they should in, in, in crypto land in the U.S. Our, my view is that this will solve itself to some extent. You know, as PayPal rolls out a stable coin, uh, it's hard to believe that will only be used outside of the U.S. Uh, you know, Twitter is getting their, their uh, payment licenses uh, in certain states already. So we think over time these things will solve themselves, but 
the regulatory issue that we've had to kind of work through has been challenging, uh, and we don't think this is going to be quickly solved uh, in the next quarter or so, but over time, we do think it'll work itself out. So one of the things we've seen with the R&D program, we, we had initially started off targeting DeFi, um, DeFi projects, and while we still do that, it does create a barrier to entry, the, the uncertainty around the, the regulatory landscape, and it's just one more thing entrepreneurs have to overcome. And while we still work with, with DeFi companies, we, we, we have broadened who we're trying to engage with a bit um, to perhaps some more traditional industries that aren't as heavily regulated. And maybe, Rob, you might have a different set of challenges because I know it's probably more centered around maybe HIPAA, HIPAA or like privacy and all that stuff. Could you talk to that and the different set of challenges you very, face? Very gladly. Uh, there are probably very few academic or, or so societal issues that are less touched by regulatory issues than healthcare. Uh, we've been in that for, for the beginning, and it's all really trying to codify a certain level of trust that everybody has to have in everybody else's actions. Whether that's a patient who has to trust the doctor, whether the doctor has to trust the um, provider of medicines, that those medicines and those treatments are effective. Um, really at the center of the whole thing is the Food and Drug Administration with the FDA that has to regulate that whole thing. And I think it's important to note that the FDA neither has the political mandate nor the, uh, the finances to do any individual testing. So they regulate the whole industry, but the whole industry is based on trust and uh, in each other's actions. And so that was a little bit easier in, in the past where everything was recorded in analog way. So when I got started, um, drug development was done by armies of technicians in white lab coats with a clipboard, writing down what, what happens when you watch an animal when you give them drugs. Um, and that really has changed because that really, um, it's been all recorded in handwritten notebooks, and it was very different to be able to falsify um, data and things like that. So obviously, everything has been converted into a digital workflow. And I, I personally have spent like 25 years of my life replacing this objective perspective that people with clipboards do, replacing them with AI systems, computer systems that try to automate behavioral phenotyping. Uh, but once you deal with digital documents, you also open a whole can of worms because now you can um, metadata uh, as well as the content can be altered without leaving a trace. And that has really created a nightmare for the whole process. I got into the whole aspect of digital ledger technology because it allowed us to weigh a way to create this truth engine for the type of data that everybody relies on being authentic and verifiable. Awesome. Um, very thorough. Um, Saji, you have uh, recently been the recipient of not just the Cubic Labs um, uh, a grant, but you've also got a grant from Mass Mutual, um, or I believe you have a partnership with Mass Mutual. Can you just talk a little bit how the combination of kind of public private um, support has, has been helpful for you to grow your business? Yeah, so uh, basically, uh, just to add one more point on what uh, the Rob. earlier question was about regulatory impact, uh, I think we have one more advantage in that area because we mine the rules and regulations published by all the agencies on a daily basis. So that is embedded into our product and allows companies to stay compliant. So from that perspective, as they publish rules, we help out other agencies. For our own compliance, it's more of like uh, the regular SOC 2 and other stuff. But coming back to the question on uh, uh, Cubic Labs uh, grant and also how we collaborated with uh, Mass Mutual. So basically, uh, like we are primarily an assurance provider. Like our platform enables companies to uh, stay compliant, manage policies, procedures, you know, do, do proper due diligence on their internal processes, get audited, etc. But to add to this assurance framework, we 
we see a lot of challenges that many industries face in implementing know your customer or how to you know manage that process because most of the products are very you know geared towards uh, banking financial services where you need really complex customer validation but think of a real estate company a telecommunication company for them the know your customer process has to be very simple so we found that a blockchain technology can really help in you know turning the efforts to validate a customer into more of a community effort and reduce the overall cost using blockchain and we have overlaid it nicely on top of our enterprise to enterprise collaboration so this grant has really helped us to you know sim uh, bring to fruition uh, uh, a new product into the market that will be rolling out soon and uh, the mass mutual again the same technology helped us to simplify their governance problem in how uh, they are uh, they were manually annotating various documents and uh, and somebody had to uh, you know collect all pages like hundreds of pages and create a single copy before they could actually review them and uh, make changes to their uh, original uh, documents so basically this process could again be simplified using this process and recently they published our successful collaboration with a very large fortune 100 company so these kind of programs really help companies like us to find our footing and grow our business yeah and you know i would say in general massachusetts has a fairly robust support system for startups um, and it, it is not a it is not a quick fix to scale up some startups or particularly to scale up certain ecosystems or certain emerging technologies and one of the things we try and do at cubic labs is it, it is a more of a holistic approach where yeah we do have our r d program we have our incubator program and we want we run boston blockchain week which we see you know, growing significantly over the next couple of years because there is also a marketing element to to this there's also a, a a part of this that's saying, hey, you know, this place is open for business. Um, this place is a tech hub. We can compete with the Silicon Valleys, with the New Yorks. There is an exceptionally strong academic system here. And one of the things we've tried to do with Cubic Labs is be a, a fulcrum or an enabler to kind of to what's the saying? The, the the sum is greater than all the individual parts. How can we bring all these these, these things together? Um, We've learned quite a lot along the way. So while we obviously start with a process to vet the entrepreneurs, you know, over time you start to weigh separate factors differently. You know, yeah, the technology is in place, the the business plan is solid. Um, what about the person? Do they have the relationships? Do they have the financial runway to stick at this for a year or two? Because more often than not, the amount of time you can spend on anything is is a strong determinant of your of your success. Um, do they, you know? Ideally, they've spent five to 20 years in big business because, or, or a, maybe a corporate setting, because they come to us with a very specific idea. I want to do this, I have the relationships, I understand the market, um, and there's a much higher likelihood of success if they, if they come equip, equipped with those things. That's not to say that, um, that we, you know, if, if entrepreneurs come to us without any experience, if the idea is good enough, but we also know that we have to put together a much more robust package for them to succeed. Um, in terms of entry into the program, Tom, I think you have, um, you're probably our longest serving member in the program. What have you felt, how has the experience helped you in Cubic Labs and specifically in the R&D program? Sure, um, so just to take a step back, uh, I spent a lot of my career in traditional finance. Uh, my first job was a currency trader with Citibank um, in London. Uh, and I was in that space until 2015 uh, on the trading side, not the technology side. And over that period, it was very clear that technology was, was playing a more and more important role in every aspect of, of finance. Uh, at that point, I took a step back and started a company in 2015 doing marketplace lending. Uh, grew that through 2021, sold that. Uh, and in 2022, wanted to do something in the DeFi space. A lot of what I saw was sort of this convergence of uh, on-chain and off-chain uh, DeFi that to me created a lot of opportunities, and a lot of challenges. So uh, when we started, you know, for me, um, I was less concerned about being in a big city. I was more concerned around being with like-minded people. Uh, you know, one of the aspects of being an entrepreneur is that you are 
it's a lonely job much of the day. Uh, and so having a group of people around me that were supportive and helpful, where we could bounce ideas off of one another was really helpful. Uh, and generally speaking, you know, having the um, introductions when we needed them uh, to people, uh, either you know, legal or other uh, areas we needed some support with, or you know, in some cases uh, we, we were able to get some credits from uh, Amazon Web Services to allow us to build our cloud, cloud, uh, a cloud space. So overall, it's a variety of things, but I think from my perspective, it was really helpful to have all those in one place. Um, and you know, one of the things we've tried to do is you know, th differentiate ourselves from, from other, um, other kind of incubator, incubators or accelerators instead of, um, and instead of in the traditional programmatic, you got your lunch and learns, you, you, you got like, a lot of our entrepreneurs come to us, they're very well established to the point that I'm embarrassed sometimes talking to them because they know a lot more than I do. So, so really it's more, what can we offer from a concierge service type of view, a type of view where we do have advisors in the wings ready to help, we have the, the CPAs ready to help, the legal ready to help when they need it, when they want it. When are they ready to go for a round? When can we introduce them to capital? When, you know, what do they need and when do they need it? And for them to have a good enough relationship with us that they can say, hey John, this is what we need help on. So just a higher touch level of support. Um, Saji and Rob are two of our newer, um, our newer um, accepted applicants into the program. Um, Rob, what, what will this support enable you to do and, and, and affect your trajectory with your company? Sure, no, uh, so first of all, we are obviously very, very grateful for being accepted to the program. Uh, we'd love to um, take you up on the offer of uh, the help and, and some of the support for commercializing our technology. Um, I think it's a technology that's going to be very important. Ultimately, um, it's this truth engine that I referred to before. I probably should come clean that we are kind of uh, um, not really using blockchain in the way that I think everybody else in, in, in this forum thinks of it because we are basically using the wonderful technology that you guys have developed, um, but we are using it not to transfer assets from one wallet to another one. We are basically using it to transfer a small amount of asset back into our own wallet that ability, recording that as a tr transaction, gives us a, a note field where we can record information, in this case, cryptographic hashes that describe a digital workflow. And we can record these um, in an immutable, time-stamped, and verifiable way. With those hashes and access to those hashes, we can backstop all questions about authenticity of digital data, uh, whether that's digital workflow or whether that is supply chains or whether that is financial transactions, um, uh, law enforcement, uh, legal system. So we're really looking forward to uh, taking the, the basic functionality that we have test drive with uh, AstraZeneca in a year-long trial for pharmaceutical data and see whether we can explore it for a lot of different use cases. I'd like to point out that we've got our CEO here, John back there, the only guy with the red shirt. <laughs> uh, he is a compliance specialist and, and cybersecurity specialist for heavily regulated industry. Moira is uh, our specialist for government affairs. Uh, so if you have any, any interests in having any kind of digital workflow that you would like to record in an auditable way, uh, please talk to us. We'd love to um, chat. Okay. Saji, same question. Um, yeah, so we are uh, relatively new, but I must uh, thank Ian and John. Like, I mean, their uh, evaluation and due diligence, they were doing a lot of heavy lifting, but for us it was a very easy and simple process to, you know, get validated and come on board. Within a very short time, as John mentioned about the ecosystem, we also were able to start a collaboration with another uh, company within the ecosystem and uh, see what all we can uh, do together. So there are a lot of synergies we could derive. Uh, in addition to that, like as I said, this product is primarily geared towards uh, a lot of the smaller businesses. And Quincy has a very robust ecosystem. So we look forward to working and collaborating with uh, Cubic Labs to you know, uh, really validate this whole product around and uh, uh, grow its acceptance. And uh, 
lastly but not the least like uh, uh, as a collaboration that uh, a platform that deals with uh, assurance primarily uh, enterprise sales is a very very complex process to get through you have to deal with multiple layers within an organization and we also look forward to you know leveraging your support to not just have one mass mutual as a customer but go to many large enterprises uh, uh, scale up through this particular uh, opportunity that is available um, thank you Saji so you know one of the things I think is important is is naturally we you know we're up here on stage we shamelessly plug ourselves always um, that's kind of what you tend to do um, we are a tax exempt organization and so ultimately you know what what we're trying to do is grow this 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 ecosystem grow this environment support entrepreneurs um, so we don't have the revenue generating kind of uh, mission that other organizations would have which does put us in a great position to engage with all our local partners and, and engage in that Fulcrum position I meant um, locally. The, to break it down, like what we're doing is we're saying we are giving out packaging of twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars to start to entrepreneurs. But if we just gave out the cash, that's not measurable. So what we do is we sit down with them and we we quantify well what are the deliverables for a three to six month sprint? What are you trying to achieve here? And there's a couple of things. Number one, by doing that and having a process, it means we get quantifiable metrics on what does success look like. Um, number two, when we think about further private investment, it helps us observe the startups over three to six months and see how they are doing and, and, and their performance. Then it's essentially another layer of, of due diligence. Um, we, are, we, we are seeing a, one or two small issues in the space where you know, as someone pointed out to me two years ago, and it really stuck, like, you know, yeah, blockchain's a tool, but you still got to build a great product uh, on top of it. So when you come to us, you, you, you have to have, you have to understand blockchain, or we provide you with a resource, but secondly, you have to be able to build a great product on top of it. Um, and we have done some matching with, with teams where, hey, they've come and, and I said, I, I like what they have, but they're not ready yet. But we matched them with Brandon or one of the tech leads to get them to the point where they're ready to enter the incubator. Um, it's been a wonderful experience to us. We're very thankful to Mass Tech Collaborative for enabling us to do this. Um, and these type of emerging tech ecosystems don't just happen. It's, you know, everyone here, all the folks together that join in and, and, and contribute to these events. Um, so just appreciate everyone being down here for us. Um, anyone interested or know anyone interested in the R&D program, it's on our website. Um, feel free to send in an application, set up a meeting, um, and I'll just reserve maybe a last minute or two. Does anyone have any questions for any of our, our three startups here? Oh, come on up so we can hear you. You're okay. How did you hear that, Rob? I did not. Uh, I was asking to see how you see the uh, intellectual property NFTs uh, develop out in the uh, biotech space. Intellectual properties of NFTs in the biotech space. So, yeah, I, I, I probably stay out of that discussion at this point. Hmm. <laughs> um, we, we do have... Um, um, the, the, the law component working on this. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting field, that's for sure, that I've, I've gotten into that is uh, very different to what I've understood from the IP field in, in biotech. and, and uh, So it, a lot of the IP is owned, and it's about licensing technologies and uh, getting into it. It, it's not my, my real forte, so I, I would rather defer to somebody who knows a lot more about this than I do. Okay. Um, one thing before we finish up that, that's just interesting to note is um, you're going to hear a lot of today, I'm not a lawyer or I'll defer. There's still a lot of opaqueness and vagueness um, and a level of complexity that I see every day as applicants come in. They spend so much trying, trying to describe to me how it works that they actually can't tell me what it is. Um, and we still do see a disconnect between the tech heads who 
they basically understand the technology and they're, they've created, I, I'm blue in the face from saying this, they've, create, they've created a technology, they cannot, they don't know the industries they're trying to sell into and thus they can't really address the pain points um, of that industry and nor can they communicate effectively to an executive level person on the business side how this will affect your bottom line, how this will affect your revenue, your operational efficiencies and one of the things we do keep a close eye on too is um, you need to know how it works but you really need to know say what it is too. You know you've got to be able to communicate and we do have a huge technology of, of tech heads that are struggling communicating to the business heads and it's something we are struggling to adapt and work with the entrepreneurs with as they communicate like hey you know, diff different audiences different messages um, but again we could chat for this stuff all, all day but I'm here after does anyone want to chat any of the guys are uh, thanks so much for coming down and uh, give it up for our tree our tree aspiring startup <laughs> thank you so much